celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. It's Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble. And the Ramble goes until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. It is now 10.06 Eastern Daylight Time. So if you're anywhere in the world, figure out what time it is in New York City, and uh, it may be live. If not, what you're listening to is a recording, and that's fine, too. Hopefully, it will be an interesting show, more interesting than me. You know, every night I usually do an interview with somebody. Uh, it's either uh, Bubbles or Pearl or Durst or my ex-wife or sometimes somebody else. And uh, that goes on for about 25 minutes, and then we go to the citizen panel. But some nights I have nothing. Absolutely nada. Completely nothing. And um, at that point, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, look, my, by the way, this is one of the people we talk to all the time. Uh, Bub says, park it, whore. Uh, I can't, I'm not wear, I'm wearing that to the gym tomorrow, I, you know, because I, I don't want people to yell at me. Anyway, um, uh, but anyway, I, so I have nothing to talk about. I'm absolutely nothing. I have ready, if I need it, uh, today's... Uh, uh, breaking news uh, or, or news break uh, segment that I did, uh, which some days we get tons of people listening to, and other days uh, hardly any. Well, we some. I I get more people listening to the news break than listen to this show when we have it online. And quite frankly, I'm thinking of not posting it any longer, except on the Gabnet page, uh, rather than put it on my Facebook page because it's a complete waste of time. Uh, the the news break thing, yeah, I'll put that on the on the Facebook. But anyway, I don't know. I just I get very frustrated by the whole by the whole thing, as you know. And uh, 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 you know, like last night I was talking to uh, Jack Bishop after the show because there were some problems here technically. Which you know, I always get these technical problems that hit at like. Uh, 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 1.30 in the morning and then I want to go to sleep but I can't get to sleep once I've tried to fix something I'm so amped up from trying to fix it that I can't go to sleep so then I rely on uh, these little babies uh, that's, uh, that's uh, Xanax how many do I have left in here I still have like 180 of them in the other room because I don't I'm very careful about how I use them uh, but man, they put you to sleep and you stay asleep and, you know, and I, but if I go to bed and then I just lie there and lie there and lie there and wait to go to sleep. So if I've just had a problem and I've had to solve it, my brain is like racing. Okay. So last night Jack had a, had a problem because something, something with his machine was causing this machine where he has to post shows to go crazy and go nuts. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's that. I have to keep remembering the cameras up there. See, when I had the old, when I had the old screen, it was lower, so that whenever I just kind of looked this way, it looked like I was looking at you. But now I have to look up at it. I wish I would invent a screen where the camera is in the screen, and it could then you could then when you were talking to somebody, you could see like if I'm looking, I'm not looking at the camera now, but if the camera were right here, where I'm looking then it'd be fine, right? But I have to look up there. There you are, see, I see up there. You see me, uh, you see? I got my finger up right there in the, uh, uh, there we go, anyway. So uh, that, that means nothing to the people who are listening to it <coughs> over at gabnet.net and uh, uh, are just listening to the audio only because they're going, what the fuck's he talking about, a camera with the thing and all that, so. Anyway, so I see, I told you I have nothing to talk about. I, mean, I got shit all to talk about. I do have stuff, see, I do have stuff to talk about. 
okay? But if I talk about it now, then if I bring it up later, it's redundant. Like, for instance, there's this whole flap over Samantha B going on. Uh, and I could do the next 20 minutes on the Samantha B situation, but I don't want to do it because then we go to the show and we go to the callers and uh, I've already talked about it, you know. So uh, what do I talk about here? Uh, and, you know, I could complain about, uh, well, how do you get a bigger audience on the Internet and things like that, but I don't want to bore you with that thing. Uh, but, you know, it is constantly vexing to me. Because, as you know, I used to be a big shot, as it says on the Facebook page. But I'm thinking about not posting this on Facebook any longer after the show's over. Or, uh, uh, you know, and just posting it over there at gabnet.net where he says uh, Alex Bennett rambled video and maybe that video portion up at the top, although I'd rather keep the breaking news one there. Uh, and if you want to watch it, that is one place you can get it and that's it, you know. Because uh, I, I, I just don't know that Facebook people aren't annoyed by every time they turn on the thing, Alex Bennett's posted something new. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, I have to figure that one out. But the breaking news thing we will always post on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, and uh, that's the two places that that's posted. It's also posted on my on the gabnet.net page because it's done through, that's a feed through YouTube. So you know that. Okay, so do I have anything to talk about or should I play today's uh, um, uh, uh, little deal that we, that we did about breaking news? Uh, w let me explain it before I play it, okay? I I'm gonna do that. I'm lazy tonight and I, I, I don't feel up to, uh, to trying to fill the next uh, Oh, 17 minutes here with just nothing and bore you to death. So if you haven't seen it, we'll be pl we'll play the uh, the breaking news thing. I do this news break thing every day, and I post it at about. Eh, sometimes I do it early, like 11:30 or noon, and other days when I don't have to do like an interview or something, I'll do it like at uh, at one. Uh, and I found that the problem with it is, and it, it is always a problem is that by the time it goes on, by the time it's been on for three hours, the news has changed. And so there's stuff that when people go to my news break, they go, hey, why didn't he mention such and such? And, why didn't, and I'm not going to go then back in and update it for two hours later or three hours later. Like uh, today, uh, you'll hear, hear the story about, uh, um, about the pardon that the president gave, okay? Uh, and uh, by the time this thing was on for two hours, there was an addition to that story, and I'll tell you about that after we play today's news break. But let me just play the news break, and then uh, that'll, that'll, that'll blow eight minutes. It's, only, it's very short, by the way, and I, it's been eight minutes to today, and it was like eight minutes yesterday, and really, I like it when it gets down to like six minutes. It's like really short because that's what plays best on the internet. But anyway, if you haven't seen our news break, this is what it looks like. Hey everybody, it's May 21st, 2018, the last day of the month, and this is News Break, and I'm Alex Bennett. Let's start looking at the news, because we got a lot of it today. Our government announced today it's going to impose tariffs on steel and aluminum imports from Europe, Mexico, and Canada after failing to win concessions from American allies. Europe and Mexico pledge to retaliate quickly. What that means is probably that car price is going to go up, okay? Uh, and it exacerbates transatlantic and North American trade tensions, which have been growing. The stock market is down today because of it. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross said the tariffs would be 25% on steel, 10% on aluminum, as some of those foreign countries refer to it. President Donald Trump, now this is the first time we mentioned him, and the reason we only mention Donald Trump on any newscast is if something takes place that is significant, and this is, he announced today he'll pardon Dinesh D'Souza, a conservative filmmaker convicted in 2014 for making illegal campaign contributions. The president tweeted, we'll be giving full pardon to Dinesh D'Souza today. 
He was treated very unfairly by our government. If you remember this guy, he's the guy that turned out the anti-Hillary documentary that was circulating uh, about the time the election was taking place, asserting all kinds of lies. You want to talk about fake news? D'Souza is the leader of that. He's an alt-right guy and many believe to be an ardent racist. A senior North Korean f official, Kim Jong-chol, and Secretary of State Mike Man Pompeo, boy, I can't talk today, so please excuse me, had dinner in New York as Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un try to salvage prospects for a high-stakes nuclear summit. He's the highest official to visit the United States from North Korea in 18 years since the Clinton administration. By the way, if, if you don't know who this guy is, you remember the Olympics and you remember uh, Ivanka Trump sitting next to somebody from North Korea? Well, that was Kim Young chol That's how his name is pronounced. Uh, a grand jury in New York City has formally indicted movie producer Harvey Weinstein on rape charges, so uh, he's going to go on trial. Um, the uh, charges stem from an incident in 2004 when Lucia Evans said Weinstein forced her to perform oral sex on him. Another unnamed woman accused Weinstein of raping her in 2013. Now, this is a strange, strange story, and I don't get it exactly. As many times as I've read it, I, I'm trying to figure out exactly what was going on here. But there's a Russian journalist, and his name is Arkady Babchenenko. And he surprised everyone Wednesday by showing up alive at a news conference on Ukrainian television a day after he was reported dead, telling reporters his death was faked as part of a special intelligence operation. Ukraine's uh, security service said the operation foiled a real attempt against his life. You got it? The guy was dead. Now he's alive. And he was dead because they wanted to foil an attempt. Strange things go on in the, in the Soviet Union and the Ukraine when it comes to political retaliation. In the wake of the whole Roseanne Twitter debacle, a perennial troublemaker has decided it was a good time to get in his own shots. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he's back. Charlie Sheen sent out a tweet hammering Roseanne and making a pitch for bringing back his old show, which of course was Two and a Half Men. Sheen provided a good riddance in response to Roseanne's demise, along with what may be a Charlie Sheen insult in which he wrote, not winning. <laughs> he added the message, the runway is now clear for our reboot. Yeah, like after all the goodwill you left behind, Chuck Bloor is going to want to bring you back and do Two and a Half Men. He'll probably bring it back, but maybe with Aston Kutcher. Now, let's turn to sports. And I must turn to sports occasionally because, let me reach over here. I do have this Emmy. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this, in fact, is my sports Emmy. A lot of people don't believe I ever won a sports Emmy, but I have it. And every now and then I have to do a sports story. Otherwise, they come to my house and take it back from me. Okay, so there it is. There's the Emmy. Okay, all right? All right. Lars Eller had a two goal and two assists while uh, Braden Holtby uh, stood strong in the Washington Capitals 3-2 win against the Var Las Vegas Golden Knights in game. You see, this is why I should have never been a sports reporter. Can I try that from the top? A take two, I have an Emmy, okay? Lars Eller had a goal and two assists while Braden Holtby stood strong in the Washington Capitals' 3-2 win against the Las Vegas Golden Knights in Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Finals. And now I have a two-shot here. This not only will allow me to keep the Emmy uh, for sports, but it will also allow me to uh, have goodwill with my wife, who absolutely loves this woman. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, a nice picture, uh, courtesy of Reuters, who took the picture, so I want to give them credit. This is, of course, the wonderful, wonderful uh, Serena Williams, and she's playing in the French Open, and after a 14-month absence from the tennis tournament scene following the birth of her daughter, 
Uh, her butt's a little bigger there, if you notice. Serena Williams made her come back to the court on Tuesday at the French Open in a warrior cat suit that had a very powerful message. She said, it feels like this suit represents all the women that have been through a lot mentally, physically, with their body to come back and have confidence and believe in themselves. Good for you, Serena. One of the all-time sports greats, no question asked. It's just terrific. And finally, last night on our little uh, uh, doodad show, The uh, Ramble, we had a citizen panel, and uh, Patrick brought up a, uh, uh, a note he had sent me earlier the day via Facebook, which you can do as well. And, uh, uh, well, listen to what he had to say. That thing that I sent you this morning, mm -hmm. uh, CNN uh, uh, trying to explain why you can't cancel the president like you can cancel Roseanne. Uh, if, I was, if I was a liberal, I would feel insulted that CNN felt that they would have to explain that you can't cancel a president. And sometimes these news outfits do stuff that is exceedingly stupid. Okay, and that was, of course, one of them. Thank you, Patrick. You can see our Citizens Panel and the Ramble every night, 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Tuesday through Friday. You can go right to here so you can see the picture. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Bolo Bennett forward slash live. And if, if you put that in your browser, uh, what will come up is a player, and that player, if you like tab it on your browser so it's there all the time, We'll just be there with a countdown to the show, and when the show starts, it automatically happens. You can also see the live show over at gabnet.net. You can also hear the program over at gabnet.net when it's live. Then after the fact, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on iTunes, we're on uh, live stream. Uh, are we anywhere else? I think we're a couple of other places, too. Go to the gabnet.net page, and you'll find out all the places you can find us after the fact. See you tonight, and then hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow uh, when we do more of this little thing we like to call Muse Break. Have a nice day, everybody. And that's the way it looks, okay? And uh, I post it every day on Facebook, and I post, post it on the GabNet page, the GabNet.net page. And uh, I don't know, I, 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 it, it's, people seem to like it. You know, it gets more listeners than this does. So... Uh, my question is, why am I doing this? Uh, I don't know. I guess so I can do that? I don't, I don't know. And, uh, it, you know, I would not wish that my whole life would be just reading a bunch of news items. But what I've tried to do, I'll tell you what I've tried to do. We have a, we have a no Trump policy, basically. But it's not a no Trump policy. It's this. The Trump so monopolizes the news cycle that we wanted to do something about that. That I found that when I was doing this thing, every day, five stories were about Donald Trump. One aspect of Donald Trump's assholeness uh, after another. And, and it, was, it just was driving me crazy. So I said to myself, look, you know, this guy just monopolizes the, the uh, news cycle. And all the news organizations like CNN and MSNBC and Fox and the, you can go on and on with them, uh, just half their newscasts, three quarters of their newscasts, always about Trump. And I'm going, you know, there are things happening elsewhere in the world that people should know about. And so that's what I try to do. And so the only item that I had today about Trump was this insanity of um, pardoning uh, this uh, D'Souza guy, uh, who uh, will explain him a little bit later. Uh, but uh, so I felt I had to mention that. that. That was an important story. So when the president does something that is newsworthy, we'll mention it. But otherwise, we're not going to mention it. And usually he doesn't do anything newsworthy. It's just a repetition of uh, uh, there wasn't collusion and the FBI is trying to frame me and uh, on and on and on. And it's one thing after another like that. Uh, and yet uh, this thing about D'Souza today being paroled uh, or commuted or having a sentence commuted or whatever the president did. Uh, 
is is uh, uh, was newsworthy, and we will talk about that with our citizens panel. That and the other people he has indicated he is going to give pardons to, or commute their sentence, or whatever you do. Uh, I'm, it's amazing. It is really amazing. Uh, and it's amazing the other people that he's going to have doing it. Now, you see, that's what I'm saying is the news about those other people came out maybe two hours later. But I had already put the show to bed. It's kind of like, it, it's almost like the reason newspapers are having trouble now. Because their online presence is more current than any newspaper presence. I mean, right now the New York Times is printing tomorrow morning's New York Times. And then if it's raining, it will be left at my, uh, in my courtyard in a soggy mess for me to pick up and turn into something out of, that I'm going to turn into paper mache. Uh, but they're, they're printing the newspaper right now. Well, by the time it gets to my doorstep, the whole news cycle has changed. So really, their digital presence is probably more important, all right, uh, than uh, than. Uh, than, uh, you know, uh, their uh, uh, newspaper itself. I would get rid of the newspaper, only I get the digital because I take the newspaper. Now, I could pay just for the digital. It's like 35 bucks a month, but it's, I think, 35 bucks a month if I want, like, the uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday editions. So that's what I take. And, it, it, and it, 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 if it rains, it, it, the guy does not have plastic sleeves to put the paper in, and I really get a paper mache version of the New York Times. I'm thinking the next time this kind of thing happens, uh, I'm going to wad it up into a, into a kind of like a ball, which it, and it will stay as a ball because then you've, even if it dries out, you've already crunched it together. And then I'm going to get somewhere, I'm going to get this big ball, I'm going to leave it on the front doorstep of the New York Times and say, here are all the newspapers I've gotten from you that are wet. Because, and, and I called them the other day and I asked them, I said, why? It, it gets delivered wet. Why don't you put them in plastic things? And they said, well, that's up to the delivery person. I said, what? They said, well, we have a lot of different delivery people that we hire to deliver the papers to different neighborhoods. And they have to, if they don't want your newspaper to be wet, have to pay for the plastic sleeve to put the newspaper in. And if they don't want to pay for it, you get a wet newspaper. I said, but you're the people who are saying, we're going to deliver the New York Times to you every single day, and, and look at what's happening. I'm, get, I'm not getting it. It's wet. And sometimes it's not wet, it's windy, and they just drop the things in the, uh, in the entrance to our courtyard inside the gate, uh, and then they sit there, and as the wind blows, it blows the newspapers all over the courtyard. So you have to go and, and find various parts of that newspaper. And now, it used to be we were about the only people here who had the New York Times. This is a very, the people who lived here were kind of poor, okay? And, and, and not exactly the New York Times type of people, meaning white. Uh, and so we were about the only ones that subscribed to it. But now, since they started charging big prices for the apartments here, and since it's being, since it's gentrifying, uh, uh, the, we're not the only ones. There are tons of people who get the New York Times. So when on a really windy day, I mean, you've got literally, it looks like somebody TP'd our courtyard. So, and I tell the New York Times about this, and they don't do anything about it. But like girlfriend, my wife, she wants the, uh, uh, the, the newspaper. So I, you know, yeah, the hell with it. I, hey, look, I've wasted all this time now, and I've managed to get us to uh, time to go to the uh, citizens panel. So let me go online here on, uh, on uh, our uh, Skype and... Um, See what we can, uh, what we, who, we, who, who wants to call the program. We're online now, in case anybody wants to know. If you want to know how to call us on Skype, just go over to our gabnet.net page. And when you go over to the gabnet.net page, uh, you will uh, see on the right-hand side a whole tutorial on how to, how to call us. It's very simple, and it's got all these links to help you do it. Links so you can get Skype. 
Uh, it tells you how to set up Skype. It then has a button you can press that will automatically make your Skype call us, okay? So it's all there. And there's also a, uh, a regular phone number, too, in case you're uh, uh, an individual who, uh, who is a Luddite and uh, still just wants to use the telephone, which you're probably right to do so because uh, having the Internet now so compromises your life that really it's, there's great danger in using the Internet now. So anyway, so for those of you who want a phone number, it's there too. I pay for it every month. Uh, every three months, actually, I get a bill on it. Hey, there, here comes, here comes Phil. He's the first one uh, to uh, 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 join us. Oh, oh, you're. Oh, I did. I forgot to go get the hat. There's the A's hat. You sent, you sent me that A's hat, right? You said you wanted one. You sent it. Yeah. Turn, turn up. Uh, turn yourself up a little louder. I think. Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, how, how's that? Oh, I know what the problem is. Wait a minute. Uh, there, there, there we go. Wait a minute. Is that the gain? Okay, I turned it up. I turned it up here. Talk All to right. me. Talk All to right. Me. Want me to turn it down now? No, no. Now you're fine. Now you're fine. So, Somehow my gain on that particular thing went down. I don't know how that happened. It's, it's the, it's, there's some sort of mystery thing. That happens to me a lot. You know, all of a sudden... Uh, I come into my office and my email is open. Yeah. And, and I know that nobody's looked at it, but it, it just, it wasn't, oh, I didn't leave it open. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. So how are you today? Uh, it, uh, not a bad day. Went to the chiropractor, feel pretty good. Uh, uh, I, um, uh, I probably should go to the chiropractor. I mean, girlfriend gives me a bad time that I don't. Uh, but I have to go get a, 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 a chest X-ray first. Really? Yeah, yeah. For the, sciatica? He, yeah. No, he wants it. He wants an X-ray of my. Uh, I guess. I guess a chest back. X-ray or back X-ray or something. Yeah. I. He, but no, he just wants. But I can't. This. See, this is what I don't like about chiropractors. Okay, they're not really fucking doctors. All right, and if they were, I wouldn't have to do the following: go to my regular doctor and ask him to make a prescription so I can get an x-ray. So I can give the x-ray to the chiropractor. If the chiropractor were a doctor, he'd be able to get me. Well, my chiropractor has an x-ray machine. Oh, so really? So maybe it's just the choice of which chiropractor you're talking to. Oh, so to. I got a cheap-ass chiropractor she wants me to go to. Yeah. Um, I've had two different chiropractors for this upper cervical thing. Mm -hmm. One guy does it electronically. He has, uh, and, and it does, uh, it, it was, it was. Is it his super chiropractic zapping machine? Well, he had that too. But uh, as far as the x-ray, uh, it, it was, uh, it was done. They x-ray it and uh, you see it on the computer. The second guy that I've been going to, and I like this guy better, although his stuff isn't as modern. Uh, he actually takes film, and uh, the other day, uh, he takes a film of me, and he says, "Geez, this is blurry. I, I you know, I, I don't understand. Why is this coming out so cloudy?" So I just try to think of what I used to do when I had my own dark room, and I said, "Well, what's the temperature of your water?" And he, uh, I said, "I think it's supposed to be 68." And so uh, a couple days later, I go in. He says, yeah, I checked. My water was the wrong temperature. I did a 68. It's clear as a date as, as you know, as all get out now. So, uh, well, that isn't that wonderful. Yeah. But that isn't being a doctor. Well, uh, you know, I just it was a long time oh, I know, ago. Oh, I know. And I'm going to get I'm going to get I'm going to get crap from people who call me tonight. Why is that? Because I'm putting down chiropractor. I mean, yeah, I just, I just some think, people, I think it's just phony. Just don't believe in them. Well, I, 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 I really don't believe in them, but I'm going to, I have had this thing with the numb feet and I'm going to go see if he can do something. She says, well, you know, it'll take a while before it really gets to work. And I that said, no, my feeling is when I go to a doctor, if I'm sick, I want to walk out of there feeling better, or at least having a prescription for something that will make me better. All right. Yeah. I don't want him to say, well, you know, come back next week and we'll do some more. And eventually you won't have as, as much numbness in your feet as you did. Well, bullshit. 
How much is that going to cost me before I'm well? Uh, everything costs, you know, and uh, and once they get you on the hook, whether they're good at it or not, they, they want those follow-up visits. I remember uh, my friend uh, was thinking about, he was a chiropractor, he's retired from it now, and he, he had thought about a concierge chiropractor where you pay so much a year and, and oh, you get Oh, my doctor, my doctor. Service. My internist has a concierge service if I want to pay $2,000 a year for it. Yeah. But I don't want to pay $2,000 a year for what he should be doing for me anyway. Well, and I knew somebody else who had a doctor's concierge thing, and they used to come to your home. They, they made oh, he'll make visits. house calls. He'll make house calls. Yeah, yeah right, exactly. For two thousand dollars a year, yeah. You know. uh, I don't know that that's that expensive for uh, at our ages. Uh, you know, I consider it expensive when I'm fully insured. Yeah, you know, and I and I when I go to see him, I really don't have to pay anything. Yeah, you know, or maybe I have to pay a little bit of a co fee or something like that. But, you know, I mean, uh, why should I pay him another $2,000 so it'll come out to my house? You oh, know, yeah. what's funny is when I was in the hospital with the kidney stone, I wake up from my drug-induced uh, coma, oh. <laughs> and there he is sitting there. He came to see me at the hospital to see if I was okay. Now, I didn't pay him for that, but I'll bet you he sent a bill. Did he eat your Jello? Huh? No, no, he didn't. But I bet, I bet we, I got charged for it. I bet, I bet he yeah. charged my Medicare for it. Well, uh, I was looking through my papers. And by the way, I like this doctor. So please, if he, if he at all is listening, don't think I don't. Is anybody else going to call, or do I have to beg here? Go ahead, Phil. Uh, I, I was looking through my uh, paperwork from Kaiser, and uh, you know, sometimes I open things up and I just throw it in, the, in a pile. And uh, these were the bills for my prostatectomy and uh, the uh, anesthesia. Mm -hmm. uh, about ten grand. Really? Uh, although I paid eighty-eight dollars. Well, so, yeah, but you're still less one prostate. Uh, yeah, it's That's not like money. it's not like they did something to save your prostate. Well, uh, my prostate was beyond saving. Was it? Yeah. You know, I had cancer. It was uh, really big. It was uh, 135 How milligrams. How did you get that big? Uh, well, it grew and not the penis. <laughs> you know, what can I tell you? Wow. Wow. Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe I had an infection. You know, I remember five or six years ago uh, having some urinary issues I went to the doctor. They said it was nothing, and uh, uh, maybe it was. Well, no, I had, I, you know, I've had urinary issues. Uh, uh, you get them when you get older because the yeah. prostate gets bigger. But um, uh, I never, you know, my doctors have said, oh, you have, your prostate's pretty normal in size. I think one time somebody said it was, it's a little on the large size because you're older now. But other than that, they didn't say it was like a cantaloupe, you know. Um Normal, uh, normal prostate is about thirty milligrams, hmm. and mine was one hundred and thirty-five. Oh, I see. Okay, that's one and, big mother ass. Prostate. Yeah, prostate. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I just figured I'd kill two birds with one stone. You know, I see all these guys that get radiation, and mm -hmm. they're, uh, you know, they're yeah. beat up, they're tired. Well, we're, we're boring people because the listeners are going away now. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, they, let them. They don't, let them. don't want to hear about the prostate. Yeah. Is anybody else going to call tonight, or am I just going to sit here with Phil? Not that I mind that, but that means that you'll have to hear Phil throughout the whole show. Yeah. Right wing Phil. Yeah. Right wing <laughs> Phil. I took a picture of a uh, of a receipt I had for a year. Yeah, I know. Uh, I saw. I got it. Okay. Good. I got it. So you can tell me, show me how much it cost you and how much I paid well, you. No, so you have a receipt. Yeah. If something happens, somebody breaks in. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, it cost you a, a great deal more than I paid for it. So the question That's is, if matter. it gets stolen, do I say, hey, I need to get this much money back, or do I uh, tell them how depends, much? It depends on your policy. If you have replacement value, yeah, uh, 
or actual cash value. Actual cash value is depreciated. Replacement value, it means that they have to give you one of the same thing brand new. Oh. Okay. So you look at your policy. If it's ACH, you don't want that. You want R uh, RCV. RCD. I, RCD. I, I don't know. Girlfriend gets the homeowner's policy. Well. And and uh, she, I give her half the money for it, and I don't know what's in it. I just know we have a homeowner's policy. Well, let me say this about that. Uh, you know, there were fires in Santa Rosa. There were fires in the Oakland Hills back in the early 90s, and yeah. a lot of people lost everything. And those that had ACV, um, which is actual cash value, and that's a depreciated value. So if, if you got a 27-inch TV and you paid $100 for it, and that 27-inch TV is three years old, now they say it's worth $25. So that's, that's, what, that's what you get, right. Right. But if you have... Uh, RCV, which is uh, replacement cash value, then uh, if you had a 27-inch TV, they got to replace it with a new 27-inch TV. Uh, and if that costs $150, then so be it. Yeah. Uh, the difference in the price of the policy people found out, because I, I was dealing with people in their floors d due to uh, the fires. Yeah. And... Uh, the difference, sometimes it didn't cost any more to have replacement value as in comparison to actual cash value, well, I'll, but I'll people have didn't know, Yeah, and uh, they didn't read their policy, and they didn't ask I'll have their to ask girlfriend, agent. you know, what we have. She probably doesn't even know. No, no, you got to call your agent, and, uh, and they'll be able to tell you if you have replacement or not, because, you know, when you figure, uh, let's say you go to Europe, and somebody breaks into the apartment and takes all your crap. If you got actual cash value, you're going to end up with uh, not six TVs, but one. <laughs> right, you know? right. This way, I would, yeah. I don't think they could walk out with all the TVs I've got in this apartment. <laughs> That's true. I'm not really worried about that. In yeah. fact, if they stole two of them, I'd probably look around and go, is there a TV missing here somewhere? You know. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, um, so, um, uh I guess we should get to the 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 news items. Uh, if nobody wants to call, nobody wants to call. Well, you know, uh, I saw some things on my phone that w were interesting. Now it seems that a bunch of white nationalists, and they're all Republicans, are running for office around yeah, the country. Yeah, there are about six of them. There's one in San Francisco. Really? Yeah. Yep. There's one uh, in San Francisco. And there's another guy who's a big white nationalist. I can't remember where else. Who, who's, none of these guys are going to win. No. Okay. Uh, especially in San Francisco. You know. Well, it, the guy who is going up again uh, in San Francisco is going up against Diane Feinstein. Yeah. For for for, for senator, uh, and he hates Jews. Yeah. They yeah. all hate yeah. Jews. So I, you know, I mean, I I understand why he's going after. Diane Feinstein, he hates Jews. You know. no. She yeah, is well, Jewish, isn't she? She's not Jewish. Her, her Feinstein, Dr. Feinstein, which was her uh, prior husband who passed away, yeah. he was Jewish. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, Diane Feinstein's not. Oh, really? Okay, well, maybe this guy has been lost on this guy, and he's hating her. His hatred is misplaced. Well, uh, I don't know if Richard Blum is Jewish. But uh, you know, maybe is, is he married to Richard? Who, he married to Richard Blum now. Uh, Richard, yeah. Oh, okay. She's been married to Richard Blum for. Uh, well, I think a long he, time. I think he's Jewish. I think Blum's yeah. a Jewish name, isn't it? Yeah, I think they used to own Blum's uh, that was in the basement of Macy's. That was a candy candy yeah. thing, wasn't right. it? I used to love Blum's uh, candy. Right. Well, that's his family. Yeah. And so he's married. He's been married to Diane Feinstein for. Uh, Ever since her neck went like, up I'm, to here. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice she's not wearing that scarf anymore? You're right. She was wearing the scarf for a while because she was getting what I've got, a turkey, turkey. neck. You yeah. Know. I kind of like my turkey neck. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, do you pull on it? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've been, uh, I've been working out, and I, I'm getting tired of working out. Yeah. I'm getting, you know. Today you just I, go out there and drink the free coffee. 
I, what? They don't have free coffee. Right. What See, my mean, gym had free coffee. Wait a minute. What, what, what is a gym doing serving coffee? Well, if you go in there at 5 in the morning, you want your coffee. Yeah, but, I mean, co isn't that against some kind of a health regimen? No. No? No. You're not when you pay what we pay. <laughs> you know? pay uh, I, want, I want coffee, and I want good coffee. Wait, pay for what? Pay for the, How much do you pay for the gym? Well, uh, I uh, quit the gym that was across the street from me. Yeah. And I'm joining one that's uh, a block or so from my store. Yeah. So, so uh, now those gyms weren't that expensive. Mine was uh, the, across the street was eighty bucks a month, and uh, the one uh, down the street from the store is sixty bucks a month. Yeah. But I was I was paying a hundred and eighty a month for the one in Lafayette that uh, wasn't convenient to go to. But I I wish I never quit it. It was much nicer. It was like a country. So, so how much are you paying? Uh, I at. At the one I'm going to be joining mm -hmm. next uh, next yeah. month, yeah, fifty nine, I think a month. Yeah. yeah, I pay fifteen a month. Yeah, but I get towels. <laughs> well, I I never ask them if they have towels that you can use. Uh, uh, but yeah, paper uh, towel. They got toilet paper, and you just pull it off the roll. Yeah, you're only allowed two pieces. Hey, you know, it's a block and a half away. So yeah. I don't even shower there. I go home and shower, right? Yeah. You know, uh, and and for fifteen bucks a month, it's a bargain. It wasn't a bargain for fifteen dollars a month when, for two and a half years, I wasn't going there. Yeah. So, but now I go there almost every day. So it's like fifty cents a day. Yeah. Are you making friends? No. No, you're not. You're not ha talking to people. No, and I wish there were. Hey, can I be sexist for a moment? I wish there were better looking women at this gym. Yeah, I mean well, they're 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 there and they're working out and you know they look in shape, but they're I'm going you know I'm I'm looking for one that I can kind of lust after in my heart and there's nothing, nothing. Well, I I had a friend when I lived in New York, he belonged to the New York Athletic Club and the and New York AC. Yeah, and uh, at that time it was all male, uh, so you could go to the pool, you didn't have to wear any clothes, but uh, I believe that it's co-ed now, and it was uh, very difficult, I think, to get into as a uh, as a member. But it was it was a nice. I think the New York Athletic Club now is like a chain here really? in New York. Yeah, I think I belonged to one of them once. It was like in the basement of uh, of of where Sirius was, and so I joined it thinking, well, if it's here, I will then go to it every day, and I just. Uh, part of what turned me off is they gave me a locker and it was like down on the floor and I had to kneel down to get into my locker and that was answer. that was too much for me so I never went back. I always kid with him and tell him, look, if you're going to assign me a locker, I need one with a view. Here, you just take a locker and put a lock on it. Yeah. Just, uh, but uh, the, the New York AC back in the 70s yeah. was uh, was a very exclusive. Uh, yeah. uh, health club. Oh, well, by the way, by the way, uh, eleven minutes, and I'm shutting this down. If we don't Never. hear from anybody else, yeah, well, you know, it was Patrick's birthday yesterday. Was it really? Yeah, I just saw something on Facebook. I I turned off the birthday notifications. I you know uh, uh, enough with them, you know. But uh, so I, I looked on Facebook, and somebody posted something on Patrick's thing about his birthday, and so uh, it popped up on my feed. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's uh, let's uh, let, let's talk about a few of the items in the news today, because, uh, 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 you know, of course, we can talk about Donald Trump. This isn't the news break segment. Uh, <laughs> today, he pardoned Dinesh. Um, yeah, the uh, Indian guy. Uh, uh, Dinesh. <laughs> the what's it? What, what, yeah, I know. I, who you're I talking. said it. I. Dinesh was the name I was having a hard time with. The other one was the one I was having an easy time with. Uh, Safi or something like that. Uh, Dinesh. Uh, um, yeah. But, uh, oh, come on. Find my Bennett, stop it. This is ridiculous. And I can't remember this. Hold on a second. Let me. I can't remember it either, and I read the same article. 
Huh? <laughs> I can't remember it either. I read the same article, and I'm yeah. younger than you. Dinesh de, de Souza. De Souza is his name. Now uh, I didn't even have to look it up here. Hello there, Jeff. Well, I guess I have to, I guess I have to do this to midnight. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Dinesh de Souza. Uh, in case you're not familiar with him, folks, was there was a movie last year that was turned out during the election here uh, about Hillary, a completely lying, false propaganda piece that was turned out and put in movie theaters and then peddled to like you know conservative groups around America to go see it and did very well in the theaters for at least the first week. OK, but everything about it was a lie. I mean, I think they had her murdering people and everything else. I mean, it, it, this guy D'Souza is just this conspiracy theorist and a well-known racist. Didn't uh, Hillary slit Vince Foster's throat? Yes, something like that. And I'm sure that was in this movie and indicated yeah. in this movie. And this guy D'Souza is just the worst, you know, because... He's doing something, he says, this is a documentary. So you watch it and you go, well, a documentary, it must be true. Well, no, it, there was nothing about it that was, it was remotely true. And this well, guy has been tweeting racist tweets for years. He was one of the birthers. Uh, the guy's a real asshole. And that's the guy he pardoned today. Yeah, well, he's he's pardoned a number of people. No, and, no, wait and a minute, I wait a minute, wait a minute. Support, wait a minute. The people sure, he, Arpeo. Uh, why? Arpeo, oh, Arpeo broke the law. Oh, Arpeo uh, did the right thing. No, and no, it, it, he didn't do the right thing. He did the illegal thing. He refused to do a, a court-ordered uh, thing. Follow federal law, I believe. He refused to follow federal law. That's breaking the law. Um, it's been a while. So See, I, I mean, I, how you guys can turn around, and when I say you guys, I mean you fucking goddamn Republicans can sit there, talk about law and order, and then say a guy can break the law and it's okay. Well, uh, what exactly, now? because my memory is, is it, fading. It, mine fades too about the pyre. <laughs> All right. Uh, I never, I didn't okay. used to wake up in the morning going, and so what is it about Sheriff Arpaio? Why do I yeah. hate him or why don't I hate him? Now, there was a woman in, uh, uh, that got beat up by the cops, supposedly, in New Jersey, uh, well, and well, what does that have to do with Arpaio? Well, it doesn't. This is more news. Today's news. No, no, no. But you're you're wandering. Let's, let's stay oh, on one subject for I a while. Both of us agreed that we couldn't remember the details on Arpaio. Yeah, but that, but, but no. But what what we're doing is everybody that he has pardoned have been people who have been accused of uh, th going against the government on stuff. I mean. A uh, criminal, uh, in the case of uh, D'Souza, it was, uh, uh, what, uh, finance, uh, yeah. campaign finance fraud or something like yeah. that. And all these various people he has uh, pardoned how, how about the have woman? been people, have been people that had have the identical things uh, on their, in their problems, okay, that a certain... Uh, oh, guy by the name of Cohn has, or that Mon, uh, uh, what's his name, Manafort has. Uh, yeah, Manafort. Manafort. What he's doing is he's telling them without saying it, hey, if you don't rat on me and they want to put you in jail, I will pardon you. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know that that's true. Well, no, but that's exactly the message he's sending because why in the world would you pardon Dinesh D'Souza? Why? What I, it, was he? There was no he, national hue and cry about Dinesh D'Souza. He he believes that uh, that uh, celebrities are being uh, treated uh, differently than other people, and that they went after him. Wait a minute, D'Souza uh, was a celebrity within the right. within the yeah, conservative they're going community. After celebrities now, uh, Mark, uh, what's uh, what's the uh, well, now the here now, now 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 here's here's the part that gets really fun. He later today said he is also considering, um, uh, What's a, your name? Uh, huh? Uh, 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 Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart and that's and Rod Blagojevich. Yeah, and Blagojevich is a Democrat. Yeah, but he, but but still, Blagojevich 
is guilty <laughs> of some of the same things they're going to be charging these other guys with. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. What so what is the message he's sending? Message. If you don't rat on me, I will pardon you. I don't know. He, he, uh, Bogorovich was trying to sell a Senate seat. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but there's more to it than that. There's more to it than Martha that. Martha Stewart was prosecuted by Comey. Yeah. And uh, that may be one of the reasons that uh, he's... For tax fraud, tax evasion. Uh, no, it was for uh, insider trading. Insider trading, you're right. Yeah, but she did it, you know. Yeah, yeah, she did it. Yeah, so, and... and uh, Billy, you got one right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but what, why, do, why, do you, uh, why do you suddenly want to uh, uh, pardon these people? Uh, why, because she, because she was on The Apprentice? No, I don't know. But, you know, maybe because he can. Or it wasn't that she was. I don't think she was on The Apprentice. She was on a show that was a, uh, a, a sequel or a, a spinoff from The Apprentice that she hosted. You know, I, I'm, all I'm all I'm saying is is that presidents don't usually, to begin with, do this in their first term, let alone the first two years of their first term. They usually wait till their last term to do this. Gives you an exit strategy, right? Don't you think this might be the last term? He's just well. All I'm saying is he's doing this for other reasons, and they're stupid reasons. And most people say this is not the reason the pardon was. A presidents were allowed to pardon people. As a matter of fact, in Texas, the governor can't pardon anybody because years ago they had a woman uh, by the name of Ma Ferguson who pardoned yeah. all her friends who murdered people. And they finally like, made uh, a law that the governor of the state of Texas couldn't pardon anybody. Wasn't William Rich, I think it was William Rich, uh, he was pardoned by Clinton, and uh, he was a, a pretty uh, unsavory character. Uh, I'm uh, trying to remember the one he did that everybody was not yeah, that Rich. happy about. Last name Rich. But, but, you know, they're never happy. Like uh, 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 Obama let, gave about something like 1,600 pardons before he left office to people who've been convicted of drug offenses, mm -hmm. but not, not serious drug offenses. In other words, users who went to jail, things like that, not big time dealers who were dealing in tons. You know, or you know like that. he just wanted to make sure he'd have a steady supply and <laughs> when he was no longer in the yeah. White House. Oh, that's really funny, yeah, that's really funny. Yeah. But this is really stupid uh, today. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, why? I don't I did it. Why Dinesh D'Souza? I have yeah. no idea. You know? Maybe he's looking for a documentary on him. Well, or he was happy. Well, no, that, that documentary was done to get him elected. You don't, don't you remember the, 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 I can't remember the title of it, but don't you remember the, uh, no. the, the I, documentary? I oh, it was, it, it, people were talking about it, you know. I'm sure they were. But, you know, on the other hand, Trump is saying that it was Hillary Clinton that uh, uh, paid for the fabricated dossier and oh, the steel dossier, the steel, steel dossier. Yeah. No, they prove that's absolutely true. Now, I, look, it was supplied by the Russians. The Russians have been trying to influence the Russian, this campaign. Wait, wait, wait a minute. The, the Russians supplied Hillary Clinton. The Russians no, they hate they Hillary Clinton. The guy who put together the dossier that Hillary Clinton and the DNC paid for. They paid for the Steele dossier? Yes. Are you sure of that? Yes. Uh, do you know that for a fact? Uh, them and the FBI. Uh, it was uh, both. Uh, oh, I see. Well, they, of course, the FBI works for the Democrats. We all know uh, that, don't yes, we? Yes. Well, that's what Trump alleges. You all, and, do you believe, DNC, and do you believe that Hillary, lying sack of shit? Yeah. The DNC and Hillary Clinton uh, paid uh, for the Steele dossier along with the FBI. So yeah, look it up. Okay, uh, dossier. Uh, let's see hey. here. Uh, Steel dossier. Who did, paid uh, for? did Hillary Clinton and the DNC pay for the Steel dossier? Well, no. Who paid for? Yeah. Okay. Who paid for the Steel dossier? Uh, first. Uh, okay. Let's see this here. Right. Tr Trump dossier. We know who paid for it. This is according to the New York Times. Uh, Trump dossier, uh, who paid for it? Now, this is not the Steele dossier. Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, 
Uh, dossier of research into President Trump's connection with Russia is a product of a research firm funded by former journalist Glenn R. Simpson. It's a 35-page collection of research memos written by Christopher Steele, a respected former British intelligence agent, primarily during the 2016 presidential campaign. The memos compiled by a research firm called Fusion GPS allege right. that the multifaceted conspiracy between the Trump campaign and the Russian government to help Trump defeat Mrs. Clinton. Uh, it she, was. It, it, she it doesn't paid say Fusion. No. Nope. Well, oh, who paid? To. Okay, who paid for it? During the Republican primaries, a research firm called Fusion GPS was hired by the Washington Free Beacon, a conservative website, to unearth potentially damaging information about Mr. Trump. The Free Beacon, which was funded by a major donor supporting Mr. Trump's rival for the party's nomination, Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, told Fusion GPS to stop doing research for Mr. Trump in May 2016 as Mr. Trump was clinching the Republican nomination. So this was paid for by groups yeah. in league with Marco Rubio. So how are uh, that? how is that Hillary? All, all the news that I have heard says that the DNC paid No, Fusion because the news you hear. Right, because you're, you're, you're the, looking at a The news you hear is... You can't get delivered on a rainy day uh, you know, unless it's in a clump of, of uh, pulp. The news you hear is skewed. You're getting pulp fiction. That's what you're getting. Um, that's what I'm getting? Yeah. <laughs> this might be the clip of the day today because there's nothing else uh, that I can do. Is anybody else going to call tonight? What is this bullshit? I got, I got a question for Jeff. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this yeah, bullshit? Where are you tonight? This is right. This is embarrassing, folks. Yes, go ahead. Jeff, uh, in the last year or so, uh, I get winded really oh, oh, easily. Oh, by the way, it's interesting that you change the subject when you can't come up with who paid well, no, the steel you're, dossier. You're looking at bullshit uh, no, New I'm, York Times. Uh, you're oh, never going to... Uh, oh, the bullshit uh, it's, New it's, York it's, Times. It's simply an article on, yeah. on Go where... to CNN. Go to CNN's website or something and uh, see, you know, uh, what they say. I, I, I said, who you paid for the steel yes. dossier? And the New York Times came up. Okay, you want me to go to some other source? Yeah. Okay, let me go back here. There are other Just articles who, on it. Who, uh, who paid uh, uh, let's GPS? See. Now there's the New Yorker has an article. Uh -huh. uh, there is Vox.com. Do you know what that is? I never heard of yeah. it. The, uh, the Washington Post? Oh. You wouldn't believe them either, would you? Vox? I'm not sure. Uh, I see them come up on my feed all the time. Mm -hmm. So let me ask Jeff this question. Oh no, and he's changing the subject he's, okay, because we'll he's lo because he's it's losing like the argument. People and here. will somebody else fucking call? Because if you don't call in the next ten minutes, I'm going to call this quiz right. forever. The last year, uh, I've uh, had uh, shortness of breath, and yeah. I just attributed it to maybe inflammation and uh, and and being out of shape and being heavy. But my uh, chiropractor said that I ought to get checked for um, uh, heart. What, what, what is it called? Um, Heartworm. Heartworm. Dogs. Get no, it. no, it's not a worm. Uh, it's like a, a pressure on the on the heart. Uh, yeah. Congenital, not congenital. Uh, what, what's it called? Congenital heart uh, difficulties. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you have you gone to a cardiologist? No, uh, that's in your life. Huh? No, in your uh, you know I, I I have a general guy, and so I just wrote him tonight, and I said I, I want uh, a stress test or whatever it is that you yeah. uh, determine if uh, it's a good start. Yeah. All right. But also, it's it's very important about just a blood test. Okay. Yeah. But also. Uh, a cardiologist can look at your heart uh, very easily by putting their little instruments that they can listen to it. Yeah. Well, you know? they listened to my general has listened to it and said everything's fine. They gave yeah, me but that, he may not be the expert. Yeah. He may not be the right person to make that decision. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't know how good he is or how bad he is or or how experienced or how 
difficult your heart is to, yeah. to measure, okay? But uh, I would think it, uh, at that age, and if you're having those kind of problems, uh, it would be a good good idea to have a, a quick look. Yeah. Stress, you know, those good old stress tests are pretty no-brainers. Yeah. Yeah, they've and, never given me one of those. And, and they, they really don't, they often don't tell you much, except what they'll tell you is that you're not going to die tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Okay. Unless the bus hits me. <laughs> I had to have a stress test, but they had to. Um, I had to have a nuclear stress test. Yeah. And uh, they because no, I, I they can't uh, they can't for some reason I have a bad electrical circuit or something in my body and they can't then you know do an electrocardiogram on me. Uh, so they have to get they had to give me instead of making me run a treadmill they gave me some stuff that made my heart go like crazy which is one of yeah. the most uncomfortable feelings i've ever had in my life yeah. only to come to find out that i have nothing wrong with me you know yeah, yeah I, I had that same test yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know what i'm saying it's really not very comfortable i i, you know. I uh my chiropractor called it congestive uh uh heart issue yeah. Congestive heart failure? Well, yeah, he said, uh, you know. Are you, are you a chiropractor? Short, oh, you mean. Yeah, he says, doc, if you have shortness of breath. What, what do you mean, do, doctor for real? Yeah, yeah really. He yeah. says, if you're having shortness of breath, it's a good idea to, yeah. you know, to, to have him check. By the way, we've been joined by Tim. Good evening. Good evening. What's on your mind to get us away from Phil's heart? Well, Which he it, really doesn't need to ask Jeff about it. He just to reminded his, me of a, a local doctor. farmer when I was growing up and a teenager. He had like a, the big, biggest dairy farm and he had a big cheese store. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took his retirement claim with Social Security. And uh, he had had heart trouble in the past. Came in, filed for Social Security and said, I just got a clean bill of health from my, uh, my doctor. And then two weeks later, he died of a heart attack. Yeah. Oh, I, so, there are uh, stories. There's stories about. I remember there was this uh, guy. Uh, when I say his name, you'll know who I'm talking about. But let me, he he went to his doctor, uh, who gave him a stress test, put him on a thing, did a stress test. Everything went was fine. Your heart's uh, you know sound as a dollar. He went uh, downstairs, left the office, walked about a half a block, fell down, dropped dead. That was Jack Barry who was the host of game shows and created game shows and was the guy who was the host of 21, which was the... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he died coming out of his doctor's office after getting a stress test. Yeah, and being him. told he was, you know, solid yeah. as a dollar, which probably means you're really in bad shape, but, you know. Somehow that should make us take every day as, as an important day, you know? But, yeah, well, I, uh, I, 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 I spend every day in my life like it was my first. So, you know. Uh, well, uh, a few months ago, I bought a new piece of gear for my scuba diving. By the way, my, my underpants are creeping up on me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And so I. I this is really an interesting show. He, now we're talking about your scuba gear. Before we're talking about your well, heart. This, this leads is there to anything, the heart thing. Is there anything that you want to talk about that doesn't have to do with you? No. But. Uh, Tim never so calls I, about himself. Who? Je Tim. Jeff? Tim. Tim oh, always Tim. calls about, uh, about uh, other stuff. about conspiracies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I try That's, to fight the global, globalists as much as possible. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Fighting the globalists, then you should like Trump. I'm trying to use reverse psychology. It's working so well for Trump. I thought I'd try it. Uh, yeah. Hey, I figured out why he wants to separate the kids from the uh, parents, uh, the immigrants. It's the law. Yeah, it's a really nice thing he's doing there, isn't it? Yeah, well, well, it's it's it. just, Nicholas Kristof did a big opinion piece. Was it the New York Times or whatever? About how god awful horrible it is. And it's not, and, he said, and then uh, Lawrence O'Donnell said, you, where are the Christians in the White House? There's nothing that Jesus said or said in the Bible that would... Uh, listen, don't be holy as thou. You're holier but than thou, Tim. Hey, no, uh, let me finish. It has nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with the law, nothing to do with even stopping immigrants. 
It has to do with money. It, they're, 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 they're creating another industry like private prisons. So his, his you know, campaign donators can make more money off the public cheap. Tim, can suck more money out of the, the way, public coffers. By the way, as long as, I've, Tim, as long as I've got you here, Tim, who paid for the Steele dossier? Yeah. Uh, it was started by the was it the Washington Beacon or yep, one of those? Yep, yep. A and that started it. But yeah, no, no, let me correct you. It's not a dossier. It's not a report. And we're lay people. Unless you watch the, all the episodes of the Americans, it is raw intelligence. It's uh, not uh, a completed report. Tim, big difference. Tim, uh, did Fusion yeah. GPS receive money from the DNC and Hillary Clinton? Perhaps. Perhaps, but it was done by a reputable spy from Britain, and nothing's been disproved. I've never seen. No, he didn't. It's not, the, it's not the question he's asking you, Tim. What he's asking you is he he wants to know if Fusion GPS, which was the organization that supposedly got this whole thing together, uh, right? That's cur correct. Courtesy, they were the courtesy of a spy, was it paid for by the Democrats? Everything I read says no. In fact, it was paid by the Beacon which was uh, working on behalf of Marco Rubio. Right. Well, now, why do I hear all of this reporting that it was the DNC Because that's Hillary. what you want to hear, so, Phil. None of it, ma none, never, none, none of it matters because it wasn't the primary uh, purpose, uh, the primary reason any of the FISAs were granted or it, the investigation was started. That has to do with the fact who, who commissioned it, who paid for it. We just told you no, the Washington. What matters is, what, is it true or wait, not? Wait, true? Wait, 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 the like Washington, the, the Washington Beacon paid for it. The Washington Beacon was working on behalf of Marco Rubio. Do you have your answer now, Phil? Don't believe you. Fake news. Uh, no, I heard that too. You know, I I heard that. Did you hear at all, uh, Tim, that the uh, DNC and Hillary Clinton? Uh, paid Fusion GPS yeah. for that. No, for that. I read to you it was the Beacon that paid them. Yeah, you read it I, to me. I saw the, some posts on uh, Facebook that said that, but they've been deleted since then when they deleted all the fake accounts. Really? That's Yeah, I, I've read similar stuff on Facebook and the memes that were sent around, but those most of those have all disappeared because they deleted a bunch of accounts and a bunch of posts. So you might have been reading. Which, which, you might have been reading Russian posts, is what you might have been reading, Phil, and that's where you got your information. But if you read that dossier, it, that's a Russian post too. No, it's not. Yeah. yeah. But there's, no, there's, there's, now everybody's he's a British. He's a British, British intelligence guy. What? Well, where? How is it Russian? Because he got the information from the Russians. That he put in this dossier. Support. That's how intelligence works. They're called yeah. informant. Well, by but the now, way, now yeah. everybody, everybody that's worked with it has also admitted there could be, as always, in raw intelligence misinformation put out there by the Russians. I think so, that yes, was. And there could be, but only a very small portion, because there's eighty percent of it's been verified. May I well, say something? that I yeah. think is very important on tonight's program, and uh, I say this in all sincerity. I honestly believe that Melania Trump is a cunt. Why? What did she do? She's a cunt. Well, we know that. Uh, most women are. Uh, well, they, at least they <laughs> have... Phil doesn't. Phil, Phil, Phil doesn't. Phil, 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 Phil doesn't even know what we're talking about. No. Right. Oh, oh, hey, oh. Alex, you know what Sally Field said about that? Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait, wait a minute. Now, Phil, shut up a second, Phil. Yes, Samantha Tim. Said I don't Tim, know. Tim, you didn't. Samantha know. You, 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 well, you had to look it up. No, uh, I didn't look it up. I just. You, remembered. I just saw you. You're looking. You're reading. Everybody can see it's you reading. reading. You this looked is it my up. Phone. Huh? This is just the phone. I did not read. See, this is just. Uh, okay, the, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. Okay, but you got From a computer. Now on, Phil, you have to you submit all your answers. In the form of written, a uh, written yeah. document. Well, yeah. I just remembered when he when he said because the way, the article I read uh, had uh, just a couple of letters and a bunch of stars where the where the word cunt was 
And so it took me a minute to mm -hmm. the synapse to kick in. Yeah. The C word. So what do you think? Uh, anyway. uh, what, 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 Tim? Uh, Sally Field's response was she took a, a great offense at them using that word to describe Ivanka because if you are the... Well, was it Ivanka the, or was it, it Melania? Yes. Oh, it was Ivanka. Ivanka. Oh, okay. Ivanka. Okay, if excuse me. If you were me. the word that, that she was called... Then let me just... Wait a minute. Let me... Let me, let me let Wasn't me, it a freckless, a freckless cunt? A feckless, yes, feckless, correct. feckless yeah. cunt. Yeah, uh, and Which I, I and, and I happen to think she's just a cunt. So, oh, uh, you know. By the way, oh God, I guess I'm going to have to apologize now. But no, uh, it looks like oh, I've just been fired from Gabnet. I think I'm you're going to lose all your sponsors. Yeah, I'm going to lose all my sponsors, and I'm going to be fired from Gabnet because I now, called. This, oh, Am Ambien. Ambien, Ambien just issued another comment about you. Yeah, right. Uh, I should have taken the Ambien. Uh, this Samantha B, I guess, lost uh, State Farm and also lost uh, uh, one other uh, uh, advertiser. No, State Farm just lost me then. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, hey, I'm, I was thinking about... Hey, so State Farm, and I'm going to keep them now. <laughs> you know, Phil, you don't understand that the women consider the C word just like the the black people consider the N word. That's yeah. something they own. And Sally Field complained because she didn't think Ivanka lived up. Because if you actually are that word, you are you are nourishing to your family. You're powerful and you're beautiful. You're a good woman. Hey, well, so let, 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 there, let, let, there, let, let, their, let's their world. They, oh, okay, okay. They consider it a, a badge I'm, of honor. I'm getting a headache here. Um, Is Sally Field yeah. still alive? I thought she was the flying nun. She didn't She's crash. Huh? God damn it. Anyway, uh, uh, a, a while back, uh, I see. I think I the word cunt. Okay, let's let's discuss this properly. In England. One guy will call another guy a cunt. Does that make it okay? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, He's I was talking to, uh, what was his name? He did uh, the We of the World thing, uh, uh, the, the musician. Oh, um, uh, uh, Bob Geldof. Got... Bob Geldof. And, and, yeah. I, and I said to Bob Geldof, I said, the word cunt in England is used between guys, isn't it? And he said, yeah, absolutely. He said, one guy will call another guy a cunt. Uh, and it's a very common expression. And in fact, I even have a promo, which I probably still have somewhere around here with Bob Geldof saying, this is Bob Geldof and Alex Bennett. I want to say, you're, I, think you're, I think you're a real cunt. You know. Uh, but, you know, the word uh, in, in certain societies is, is it's, 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 not, it's not really applied to women. Well, meanings change on words what over are, time. What are you Remember wearing a glove for? Have you just turned into Michael Jackson? It's easier for you to see. Uh, uh, the, now, let's let's say... You don't uh, need to do it because nobody's going to call this fucking show tonight. Hey, you remember when gay meant happy? And, you know, nobody, nobody associated well, I mean, yeah, the word had gay a, with you, the you, homosexuals. You had a movie called uh, The Gay Divorcee with uh, Fred Astaire. Yeah, you know, and he wasn't a homosexual in the movie, at least. You know. Yeah. So you know, the, the, uh, words change, and what was acceptable. Well, well, well here's and, what I'm saying: everybody yeah. is suddenly trying to equate what Samantha B said, which, by the way, was bleeped when it was broadcast because. Yeah. That network would not allow cunt to be broadcast, and those shows are pre-recorded. They're not live, and I yeah. don't believe that word went across the air. So it was bleeped. So what the fuck is the big deal? Well, it wasn't on Twitter. Can you imagine? Uh, oh, wait, but wait a minute. Let me finish. Yeah. They say, well, Roseanne got fired. She should get fired, too. For what? For, number one... Roseanne uh, was doing it in a tweet off hours. Samantha B was doing it in the midst of a comet political comment, uh, political comedy show. There's a big difference. Well, do you think Roseanne now feels that when she pressed that send button, that she ma probably made a mistake? Oh, I'm sure she knows she made a mistake. 
She made the biggest, th that is maybe the most colossal fuck up that any human being has done uh, in my lifetime. I mean, yeah. there is no such thing as having blown a career easier or better than what she managed to do in, 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 in an instant of pushing a button. Yeah. Except for the guy who invented the new, the uh, Coke 2 or new Coke. Coke 2 may, may come close to it. Yeah, Coke 2. It's pretty close. A lot more money involved. Yeah, uh, but I mean, uh, uh, it, you know, to try and even conflate the two is is ridiculous. What Samantha B did was in the context of a comedy show that does political commentary, and uh, she was doing it <coughs> at, as 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 a piece of humor. Yeah, right? Jeff, you can, oh yeah. yeah, Jeff, you're back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that not only did she. Uh, send an email that she shouldn't have done but it seems to me like in the next day she decided to amplify it as much as she could yeah. uh, not on purpose but she was Didn't just she, fucked up um, and she couldn't get out of it That's I think she also apologized to some of her co-workers about uh, uh, her reaction to their reaction and uh didn't she say that she wanted to get uh, uh, the show so that uh, at least the other people that were on it weren't going to lose their jobs? Uh, that that was something I saw on, on a news feed. It's funny, well, the news feeds come up, but then they go away. The funny part is, is you see news feeds I don't see. I never saw her saying she was sorry for everybody else. If she was sorry for everybody else, she wouldn't have been tweeting. She wouldn't have been well, saying what she was saying. It's too late now, but you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's. You know, let me look at the. By the way, we really the, love on this show. This is really the lowest show we've ever done because now we have Phil cleaning his ears while we're doing the yeah. show. Yeah, put that good. stuff on. Uh, you know the uh, stuff I gave you. It's called ear gene. Yeah, I can't do it during the show though because when I used it the other night, I couldn't keep the earphones in. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, because what it does is it dries, dries it, so it doesn't itch. Yeah. Uh. Are you are you making money off of product placement now? Yeah. Well, that's about all we've got going you for us here. You actually should. Right. <laughs> Hold on a second. Here we go. Right. Same thing, right there. Yeah. Right there. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Nice stuff. Yeah. So what's it called? Ear gene. Ear gene. Yeah. It's a uh, soothing, refreshing ear lotion. Really? Yeah. Oh. Isn't that nice? But anyway, so, I mean, I just think this whole Samantha B thing is a, uh, uh, it, 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 people are going crazy. Well, they're trying to somehow make it equate with the Roseanne thing. Now, Did you hear what Megan McCain said? What did she say? She said she still has not gotten an apology for the comment about her dad. But they, the lady promised. Oh, she got to do a public apology. Who? She Kelly Sadler. One, but it was said in private, and and she got. No, a, but no, but in, in, during the private one, she told her. That uh, Megan said, "I want a public apology," and she said she would. Apology from who for what? I don't know. Uh, the uh, Kelly uh, Sadler is the one who said, "Don't worry about McCain; he's dying. Oh, for right, he's going to be dead." Right, for right, right, right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, uh, the the it, this is all distraction. To distract us from Michael Cohen and what Mueller's doing, it's it's just all a big distraction. Well, who ca you know who cares? I I just I'm I'm giving up the ghost on all of it. I it just it so bores me now. I'm so bored with it all. Let this guy blow the country to smithereens and let Phil say, well, no, it wasn't his fault. Yeah, you know, and I don't care because I just. Uh, I have other things to do with my life than than worry about this day-to-day -day soap opera that's going on in Washington, D.C., like it's a fucking reality show. It, it's pretty funny listening to Michael Cohen's tapes today, though. I heard part of them. You have tapes? He think it, it's, it is the yeah, Bowery but, Boys. You know, I think, Tim, I, think Tim, I think, Tim, you take this thing too seriously. I think you just let it eat you up. Well, you know? I, left, I, I was traumatized by Watergate. I just can't believe we're here again. Hey, Tim... Uh, yeah. Michael Cohn said he had tapes. Were the was the president's voice on those tapes? Michael Avenatti said he heard part of one tape, 
and one, at least one recording has Trump's voice on it. Might be just one word. Well, I have one suggestion from Michael Avenatti. Just he looks don't, like a rat. It, 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 just disappear for a while, will you? We're tired mm. of you. You you know, it's like he was sleeping at MSNBC that he had a cot in the corner. He was Didn't on it so he much. Say he had a hundred. He, he was a, he's moved up. He was on N- NPR today. Oh, really? No, that's a step down. Yeah, that's a step down. <laughs> well, it depends. It depends on how you view all the networks and so on. But he's the only one that's using Trump's uh, medicine against him. You're the same giving Trump some of his own medicine, so. We'll see what happens. You know, I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm tired of it all. I'm tired. I go, I go to these, these, I go to MSNBC, and I just watch this constant parade of people with the same fucking opinion. I'd like to hear a bunch of people with different opinions. At least in this show, we do have a different opinion. You know, watch, watch, some watch. of the some of the CNN shows have different opinions because they still have Trump supporters on them and. And it gets well, that's the way it should like be. Like to live done. in a different world, well, well, and that's and the way it should be. But I mean, the, 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 the other day, the other day, the, the, the day they fired Roseanne, okay, uh, uh, all of a sudden, they, on with uh, I guess what's her name? Uh, I can't remember her name now. Uh, one of the hosts um, had a, a, a panel, nothing but black guys talking about it. There wasn't somebody there going, well, wait a minute, and maybe ABC shouldn't have been so fast to do this, that maybe there were other ways to handle it, or, uh, you know, do, do you really take the livelihood away from the... No, they're all there doing their a lynch mob routine with, with a group of nothing but black guys. And I just want... You know, one white guy maybe in the mix who, who doesn't necessarily disagree with them, but maybe has a different approach to the whole thing? No. They, the, the fix was in. And before that, they had Reverend, Reverend Al Sharpton on. Like, we don't, know yeah, what, we don't know what he thinks. You know, the Roseanne said that uh, she thought uh, that Valerie, uh, what's her name, uh, Jared, was white. And, uh, uh, that you know, was, that was after, actually, Phil, Phil, that was after the fact, and it was right, Roseanne trying to... She's actually hurting herself by making these additional uh, excuses. Whether it's Ambien, now the, the company the company that makes Ambien says that uh, uh, tweeting is not an, a side effect of their drug. Uh, no, they said racism is not a side effect. Oh, racism, racism, yeah. But but it, it wasn't the one tweet, Phil. It's been a series of wild, very wild conspiracy theories. Um, so, most of most of which are retweeted by Don Jr. and just nasty stuff yeah. that was unnecessary. Well, so it wasn't Roseanne, just one tweet. Roseanne used to be of of different affiliation when it came to. Uh, but she used to be in the Green Party at one she was point. The Green yes. Party. She was a socialist. Uh, she, she was in a, a number of things. I don't know where the, this revelation. But so was Trump. Trump was that way too. When you get older, you get more conservative, I believe. Right, Alex? Well, uh, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, people do have a tendency to get conservative as they get older because they I don't have, mean that as a bad thing. Well, no, they, part of the reason is is that they have more of a, vet, believe it or not, vested interest in, in, in what's going on because they... We want the status quo. Right? Yeah, yeah, and, you know, is my money still worth something today? Um, we lost your picture again, Jeff, by the way. Um, are you still there, Jeff? No, he's not even there. No. Oh, well, I, good. I, We're down to I, two people. This is really a swell show, folks. Guy, no picture. Huh? I paid $5 more a month to get 30 gigs up. Not gigs, megs up. And uh, then I uh, looked up my router, and I'm only getting 105 down. So uh, I, I looked why, and why I... Do you, why do you bring this stuff up? We don't give a shit, Phil. Oh well, I, it has. It to takes do us. With we're discussing signal. one thing, and you bring up your 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 t- how many megabytes you're getting. Well, it was five bucks, you know. Uh, but you know, I didn't know that uh, the yeah, router is not hit one point three. We don't give a shit. Oh, okay. we want, we're, we're talking. We're talking about something else, Phil. Right. And well, then you take us and you drive right. us off into this ditch and get us off the subject matter. 
Well, it, it's it's not the ditch; it's the and gutter. I don't and this don't is, cut, hey, don't so, don't. This don't, is another uh, fine mess you've gotten us into. Yeah. Don't, don't give me a bad time because I'm I'm not in a good mood tonight. The fact that nobody's calling tonight really pisses me off. Enough so mm -hmm. that you oh, know, you know why? Why? It's uh, the first game of the basketball championship between Golden State and Cleveland. I should be I, watching it, but I'm not. Yeah, I, I forgot. Oh, to is watch that it. the reason why? Well, then fuck everybody anyway. Yeah, it, it, that's. It, I think it's a really big game. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's the first, but it's the championship. Well, then maybe I just won't do a show for the next week or so while this nonsense is going on. Hey, why don't you, why don't you try I to need get a Tom week Arnold off on, anyway. What? And then you can talk up. Get Tom Arnold on to talk about Roseanne, and you get a big audience. He's a big draw. Well, I could probably get Tom. I mean, but I would have to do some work to find him. But he'd he'd do it for me. I I, I kind of like Tom. He's pretty. Uh, he he came out with some kind of statement that oh, Roseanne wanted her show to be canceled. Yeah, I saw that. Well, <laughs> I, you probably know, got some I mean, kind of writer that she gets paid one way or the other. So. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, there was some deal she had where if they decided not to go with the second season, she was going to get a payment. Right. What about yeah, the other? That's a, it, it's a billion dollar show, so she's going to make out. You know what? She wants. To, she's probably going to come back on Fox and make five times as much. No. Money. What's uh, nobody's going to take that show? Are you kidding me? Are you out of your you mind, Tim? Bring it back. No. They, they brought back uh, the last white man standing for. Uh, Tim Allen. Yeah, but that that that's you, it's not that's the racist. It's not the same thing. You know, she's a hot potato. You you don't want anything to do with her. Look, if they if they didn't if they didn't care whether Roseanne was on their network or not, then they would have never gotten rid of Bill O'Reilly and they would have never gotten rid of a lot of other people. But because, yeah. you know, and he was making them more money than Roseanne would make. Him. Wasn't it their, uh, 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 what's his name, Sons, that got rid of Bill O'Reilly uh, when they were running Fox, uh, Murdoch's uh, two sons? No. Uh, they had a beef no, with O'Reilly. No, it was Angels. when the network had to pay pay out money to women uh, because they were threatening to sue them. You know, then all of a sudden, you, you know, and then they find out that he paid out $32 million to silence some women. And uh, that was enough. They just said, look, you know, there's only so much we can take. Talking about silencing, uh, is Morgan Freeman suing CNN? Yes. Uh, for defamation? Well, he's threatening to, yeah. 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 And, I, and I think, well, he should. To begin yeah. with, one of the ways he's got them dead to rights is the woman who reported the story was Probably. one of the women who complained that he came on to her. But... His her her idea of him coming on to her is she thought he was looking at her breasts. It he was oh. it was like a it was like a press junket thing, and they were all sitting up there discussing the movie or whatever. And she said, "I could tell he was staring at my breasts." This is the this is the kind of case you warned us about where Me Too could go over over overboard. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I mean, look, I'm sure. Look, I've, I've hmm. been nothing, as I've said before, nothing but good to women and decent and respectful. And uh, I've never forced a woman uh, to have sex with me. Uh, I've never pushed it to a point, you know, where they didn't want to, but I then convinced them. I never even went that far. If they didn't want to, that was it. I didn't want to do it. Okay. Right. I, but absolutely. I'll bet you I can find five women who will say, if I were really famous right now, that you know, uh, I had inappropriate relations with them. <clears throat> uh, somebody said that uh, inappropriate relations was just bad sex. Uh, it was uh, something yeah, I read. But it can be expensive depending on the power balance. Well, I I will bring up the old thing that I brought up before, and please, women who are listening to me, don't think me sexist when I say this, but you would probably give the same answer. Uh, if I presented you with Harvey Weinstein and Harvey pushed himself on you, uh, what would you say to Harvey Weinstein? And any woman would say, if they had any taste at all, I would tell the fat fuck to get off of me, right? But, but a lot I didn't. said, I said, wait a minute. I said, but what if it were George Clooney? Yeah. 
Or, or Bill Cosby. Uh, no, no, no. Forget <laughs> Bill Cosby. The Weinstein uh, thing. We don't change the subject again, Tim. What okay. if what if it were George Clooney? Then it would be far more acceptable, even if he was somewhat pushy. You know. So I mean, I I I wonder if being obese has a lot to do with Harvey Weinstein's uh, disgusting uh, presence. You know? I, I think he was just in a position of power, and these women uh, felt that if they were going to advance their career. Some of them felt that the way to do it was by sleeping with the guy. Uh, this well, would no, be I, no, I don't. Those. I I think that that's entirely. This is what he's going to claim in court. Is but that didn't not, not, all, all of these women, according to him, it was consensual. And what he's going to consider consensual is they wanted to make him happy in order to get a job out of him. Right. So that they did it willingly, but not in in other in other words, he never. He never raped them, so to speak. Right. Uh, but uh, he, they, they had sex with him because they wanted something out of him. Uh, yeah. His attorney said that he did not invent the casting couch. Well, That's his yeah. Defense. But the and fact so is, are they prostitutes? Uh, the fact is, he used it, and I find that ab abhorrent. I find using your power uh, in order to get uh, sexual favors from a woman uh, is uh, is disgusting. And, what and about Harvey Weinstein was disgusting. But his defense is going to be, can I finish what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That his defense is going to be, and his lawyer has kind of indicated it, is that uh, this was a, um, you know, this was a consensual situation. Whether, whether she wanted to do it or didn't want to do it, but did it because she wanted work. Many it was transactional. Yeah. yeah, many of these women, but that's what uh, he's going to claim. Use use their body to advance their career, and so you know, isn't that but, basic? But, well, that's because we've that's because men have held power for centuries. I and understand. That's the only way. Yeah, they, Jeff. That was power that Jeff. Jeff use. has his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, I'm, oh. I think that uh, this market, so to speak, that 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 he was in. Uh, can make a reasonable claim that this is part of the the strategy of way people got ahead in that business, and uh, that it it was common um, acceptance. Yeah. yeah. Now that doesn't mean everybody has to say yes, and doesn't mean everybody has to say no, but it was quite frequent. And you, you can't go into drug court and say everybody in my neighborhood does drugs. You gotta let me go. It no, no, work no. That but way. I think I think Tim, what what he's saying, and it, it is true that there was a time in which the uh, the social atmosphere allowed for this sort of thing without rebuke. All right. Right. Absolutely. And, and now, yeah, I, know, and I know. I'm just saying. And, and now they should, have, it, they should have caught it. Like and that. now the zeitgeist has changed, and uh, and now there's a whole new set of rules. But back then, certainly, we know that uh, Louis B. Mayer. It's rumored Louis B. Mayer had sex with Shirley Temple, okay? You know, I mean, who knows? Louis B. Mayer was the most powerful man in Hollywood, and I'm sure he, he, there, he had a, a casting couch. But I said casting couch on the couch, you know. Uh, and, and this is the way some, uh, sometimes things worked in Hollywood. There were producers <coughs> that didn't use the casting couch, but... Uh, there were those who, who realized they could use it, that it was acceptable, that nobody was going to come after them from do, for doing that. And so it, it became uh, a, a, a social uh, uh, acceptable, acceptable, norm. acceptable no, norm. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about the pardon for D'Souza? Because well, we he's in the meeting. Well, we were talking about that earlier. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, let's face it. It's Trump saying... To all the people who are currently going to be under indictment from Mueller, uh, don't rat on me. If you don't rat on me, I'll give you a pardon. That's basically. Do they have Nixon on tape telling Haldeman that everybody it's going to be total pardons for everybody? Was and that 18 but, but but they but the the senator the House didn't ever hear those tapes before they started the impeachment. If not, there would have been another article of impeachment just on obstruction. Using the pardon 
you really can't pardon somebody who might be a witness against you. Nixon was pardoned by Ford. Uh, I, I, don't, but I know, I know, but he, he offered to pardon Haldeman and everybody. And if he didn't, hadn't resigned, they would have another article of impeachment once they heard that tape. One of the reasons why Ford pardoned uh, Nixon was yeah. that he felt, and I, and I think rightly so, that it would not have been good for the nation to go right. through a criminal trial for a former president. And yeah. that, right. it, 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 that he wanted the country to get back to normal. And right. by indicting Nixon, you would be causing that. And so he gave him a full pardon so that that would never be a problem to the republic, as it were. We were also going through an economic uh, I issue with uh, inflation. Uh, that's when he came up with that whip inflation now. Uh, but but and Ford also sacrificed himself, didn't he? Because he knew there's no way he could serve yeah. another term. He was the only president that was but, never... But, but the, the pardoning of Nixon is a drop in the bucket if you read anything about what happened at, at the after the end of apartheid in, in South Africa and how people just... Were, the, 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 the slate was wiped clean. Horrific crimes just wiped clean, how the whole country could deal with that. We certainly had, we yeah. didn't have a problem dealing with Nixon being but, pardoned. But uh, this pardon today of uh, Susan. Sousa just to me made no sense at all. This is not the reason the pardon system even exists. Well, he's he, pardoning people that had special prosecutors. He had the same, to show he, that special prosecutors he, shouldn't he, exist. Well, they, uh, in the case of, uh, it, was, it was campaign finance in the case of uh, right. D'Souza. Same as Michael and, Cohen. And, and uh, of course, we had Scooter Libby. Okay. Yeah. Uh, again. For, for lying. An, uh, yeah, yeah another, another indication that, hey, if you don't turn on me, I'll... I'll pardon you too. Now he's talking about Martha Stewart and uh, and Rod Blagojevich, uh, Rob Blagojevich, huh? Rod Blagojevich. Lying and then coercion. Yeah. Um, or by the uh, way, can I say this about power. Can yeah. I say this about Blagojevich? I I did two interviews with him. Nicest guy I've ever interviewed. Good hair. Nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice guy. Uh, you know, there's something else that's going on today. Uh, they, uh, I understand Justice Kennedy was uh, was hinting that he's going to retire, and that's uh, going to give Trump uh, an opportunity to appoint uh, another... It won't uh, be that speaker. easy an opportunity this time, though. There'll be a real fight on this one. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, they it, it, he wanted to replace a conservative with another conservative. They went, okay, that's fair enough, all right? But if he's going to try and replace uh, somebody like Kennedy with somebody who's like another fire-breathing conservative, that fight's going to be a hard, hard-won fight. Was was appointed by um, uh, well, he was a Republican. No, well, not a Republican. Well, he was a conservative. He, he was not. It was he was he was he was to the, he was to the right and. They they put him in. I can't remember who put him in. It was Bush, I was think. Bush? Bush too. Yeah, and they expected that he would be very very right wing in his decisions. And it turned out that once he became a justice, he kind of went. Well, now I have a duty to to the country, you yeah. know, and not to my own po political beliefs, but to interpreting the. And so he became actually an anathema to the Republicans and and on the hit list for the Republicans. Now. Uh, didn't Bush make him the uh, the head of the Supreme Court? Or, uh, I forgot what they call that. Chief Justice. No, Chief Justice. No. Uh, oh, that was Roberts. Roberts was uh, Chief Justice. Yeah. Uh, made Bush. So Kennedy. Kennedy wasn't appointed by Bush then. No, uh, I, can't, I can't remember who appointed uh, Justice Kennedy. Uh, yeah, it was Chief Justice Roberts okay. that Bush. Uh, What's Kennedy's first name? Chief Justice Kennedy. Chief. No, he's not the chief justice. Uh, no, Roberts no, 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 is the chief justice. I know. Uh, justice Kennedy. Justice, what's, do we know his full name? I uh, no. Kennedy. Not no. John. <laughs> no, it's not that. Uh, let me see here. Uh, justice Kennedy, and then we go to Wikipedia, and then it will say that uh, he was a, he's a senior associate justice of the Supreme Court, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, Ronald Reagan nominated Kennedy for the Supreme Court in 1987. All right. And uh, they expected him to be, uh, he's been the swing vote uh, since the death of Sandra Day, uh, since the retirement of Sandra Day O'Connor. Uh, so he's always been the swing vote, which has made him a great asset, actually, to the court. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I wonder if Trump would appoint someone that was more mainstream or uh, middle of the road. Uh, trying. No, he won't. He, he won't. He'll, do what the, he'll, he'll go to the Federalist Society and pick their number one pick. But that does, you know, it doesn't mean there won't be a huge fight this time. Uh, yeah, but I think they'll go nuclear. I don't think they're going to have to. You I mean I don't think the Democrats will have a say? Uh, they may have a say if they take over the Senate or the House. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's iffy. I don't. I don't. Well, that's about fifty-fifty right now. I don't think it's going to happen. If it's possible. In a mid-year election, it's really rare that they don't. You know, or at least one of them. Yeah, but they're down pretty deep. Oh, you don't think, believe, you, you don't think, I just can't believe Paul Ryan is not doing something. He's just sitting there doing nothing. You don't like, think that like, there's going to be a big change in the Supreme, in the, uh, in the makeup of Congress? Uh, I think there will be, but I don't think it's going to be big enough. And it's not going to be, be as big as we thought. There's still a lot of people, everybody they interviewed that was a Trump supporter has not, less than 1% have changed their mind. Yes, but. You know, what What gave Trump the presidency was the swing voters. Look, those who don't I like... Don't want, I, those well, who, that's true. That's those, true. those who are Democrats are going to remain Democrats. Those who are Republicans are going to remain Republicans. Those people who voted in the middle and swang over to vote for Trump may... That's that. Those are the voters we got to convince. There's a whole group of voters. Forget it. Don't waste your money or your time. Yeah, but we're there's not, still we're a lot not, of people on Twitter... I'm not going to sit here changing Phil's mind, okay? No, no. But there's a lot of people on Twitter that still think that Trump gave the middle class a tax cut and they got more money now, which is not he true. Did. And that and that that you know we're creating all these jobs and that's not true. And what's happening is uh, the rich people are making, all the companies didn't give big wage increases. Well, you know, they, you know something. Uh, what, what, what I love is wages are on are, are, are rising. No, I can tell you oh, that no, just oh, from my little business. We're in good times now because uh, you know trade wars are good. Well, they might be. It, it's it's a tactic. oh really he, oh tactics. really. You don't have to sell tactics. cars. You don't have to make tin cans. Okay. Oh, we can make the steel here. Oh yeah. Well, and and how long is it going to take us to build those plants? Uh, and and, and, and how and where, where do we where do we find the people to man them who know how to man those kind of places? It's not going to take long until uh, the. We're uh, not going to be a steel producing country again. I'm sorry. Uh, he's uh, you know he's he said we weren't going to be a coal producing country either, and they are. Yeah. No, they're closing the plants down now. There was only one mine that opened. And, and there's less there's less workers in the coal industry than there ever was. It keeps going down. Yeah. Well, it's not economical. The, the reports that I hear, and I, granted, I'm getting them from Fox News, is that there's been well, three, if, if you got good references, let us let us know. Yeah, three point three million more jobs. That uh, uh, that income is on the rise. That. that uh, yeah. Do you know who? Do you know who created? You know, Oh, by the way, is that Jack who's uh, yeah. getting the feedback from? Yeah. Hello, Jack, you there? Yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 we got, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me just turn this down a second. We're getting some slap back from you. Okay. Yeah, right. Is it there still? Uh, no. Mm. Well, I think maybe. No. No, okay. Mm. We're fine now. Yeah. I love it when I hear people talk about Facebook and Twitter. Only because the only people that I know that spend a great deal of time on Twitter are folks on this show. And the only person I know that reads Facebook is my wife, who never reads the political stuff. Well, tell uh, her to read Facebook fast, because I'm, I make you prediction now that two years from now, Facebook is going to be completely on the ropes. I think you know, we'll, we'll all be talking to our Alexa... And Siri, and it won't be all. 
it'll all be hey, that listen, I'm, I'm sorry. I, my my uh, my uh, uh, Alexa, or in my case, it's my spot uh, in the bedroom. Uh, let me get my picture out of uh, Jack's face there. Oh, uh, 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 it, it has. Uh, she has uh, Alzheimer's because she starts talking on her own while I'm trying to watch television. And I can't figure out wh how it gets triggered because nobody says, you know, uh, I use the word echo. Echo, blah, 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 nothing. It's just the TV, some signal well, or she, something. She, she's changed the key words on her own. Pretty easy for her to do. Well, all I know is I, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, she's, she's got a problem. She's got a real problem, you know. And Amazon, yeah, Amazon knows they have a problem with it. Yeah. They, they know it has a problem with dialing up phone numbers without you asking it to. Yeah, and it was it, it was recording conversations of families and sending it to people on their Facebook list. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and it, they admit that that was happening, but it wasn't happening on purpose. Nobody was trying to, you know. Yeah. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Yeah. Safely. Yeah. Well, I would get one of those things if it would promise me it would record conversations more interesting than the ones that go on in my house. <laughs> Does it tell you who to bet at the racetrack? Try that, Alex. Let us know if it works. Oh, I don't know. I, you know, I, I like my Alexa. I tell you, it, it. Uh, you can uh, see, she I, can, I, I pretty do, soon, it, ten years from now, the, the Alexa will see the future. Do all my shopping lists yep. on it. Put on mi music when yep. we're eating yep. dinner. Uh, uh, you know, I think uh, it, it's, a, it's a good little device. Uh, thank you very much, Amazon. We appreciate well, call it. Me a, call, call me a Luddite, Alex, as you frequently do. But I remember when pen and paper would do those things. No, Luddite, you are not a Luddite because a Luddite just doesn't want anything to do with the technology. You would like to have the technology <laughs> to use, but you just have an inability to know how to use the technology. Yes, yes. So and, you're not a Luddite. You're not a Luddite, otherwise you wouldn't have those earphones sit there, those expensive earphones. Well, these aren't expensive, but uh, I would, you know, given a choice, given a choice, I wouldn't touch any of this evil crap. Mm -hmm. now, well, now, you're, now, you're, now, you're sound, now, now you're sounding like a Luddite. Yes, Does anybody have a rotary phone still? No. Yes. They, no. I, I, do, what you have one, Jeff? I do. Wow! And I use it for for one purpose. I check my pacemaker through that over to Yale University. Okay, why? Why? Why the rotary? And does they the feel if, like it, it's a good signal for them, and they 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 like it. Now wait a minute. So, now, wait a minute. Let me ask you this question though: When you use the the rotary okay um uh, well no it's not it, it's not a rotary oh okay oh, oh. Well, oh okay. it's, a, it's okay. a landline but i don't think i i think if i plugged in a rotary to a phone line i don't think a rotary would work anymore it may not no i you have to buy you have to buy an electronic rotary right which when would be have, uh, a specialty piece yeah when you have a push button all you're doing is putting through uh, a, a, a sound or a tone. Uh, doesn't the rotary do the same thing? The rotary did it by clicks. Yeah. Yeah. The the phone company heard clicks. Most most regular phones you can click over to pulse. It's called pulse, yeah. and it will send the pulse. You know the way I live in uh, in Michigan in, in center of Michigan rural. Until 78, you had to go to an operator. Hey, listen, I don't know. I, I Quite frankly, the only reason I have a landline here is because the cable company made it part of the deal that I had with the cable company. Otherwise, fuck them. I don't even want it. By the I way, we, ju we just been joined in the last, oh, I don't know, six minutes of the show by Ray Renati. Hello, Ray. Hello. Gee, here now it's a nice group. Before, I, it was just me and Phil, and then it was me and Phil and Jeff, and then... It was me and Phil and uh, and Tim and uh, then, uh, but it's been really slow night tonight. Is there a reason for that, Ray? Well, yeah, the colonoscopy drugs, oh, man. Oh, oh, I see. Knocked okay. Me on my ass, really? So to speak. How was it, by the way? 
Oh, it, it was it was um, a, a very deep experience. Yes, you and and, down, no. and what was the yeah. out, and what was the outcome? Because they have the pictures yeah. almost immediately. Don't tell me, Ray, you're stealing the first ten minutes of my show. Okay. Oh, come on, he's my guest for crying out! Right. You just steal them from me. I had me. five polyps. Wow. What? That's why I have to do it every three years. The first time I had eight, I think, and then last time I had six. This time I had five. Five polyps. Wow. You're polyp. You're, you're polyp prone. If these polyp polyps prone, are yeah. cancerous or, or uh, benign? Uh, oh, they, they're if, if always precancerous. Yeah. This time, right. I don't know. I'm guessing it'll probably be precancerous again. They're not ben They're like that middle one. Yeah. Precancerous. Yes. Hey, if Fifty years ago, you might have been in really poor health without the technology they got now. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah. It could be. I'd have colon cancer. Yeah. Right now. Uh, uh, yes. Ray, that's great. That, Ray, yeah. that is proof positive that you're not eating enough jalapeno peppers. <laughs> oh, that's what my son tells me. He bought me the bottle of what, this. Wait, like, let uh, me ask you. Ghost when, peppers. When stuff. did you get the last? Uh, yeah. When did you get the last colonoscopy? Three years ago. And and you and so they cleaned them all out then, right? Yeah. And now you had another eight? Another five. Another five. Last time I had six because or eight. What, what I, I was remember. told by my doctor was is that if uh, if you have a clean colon, in other words, you don't have any polyps when they go in there, you don't need to have another one. They say for people who are fifty for ten years. If right. you're not if you're not if, if, if you're if you're like sixty, they say five years. But he said to me he said, you're clean. He says, oh, you don't need to come in for five years. And I said, but what if something grows? He says, if it started tomorrow, it would not be cancer by five years. Yeah, because the older you get, the slower it grows. Yes. Uh, uh, well, there's a new piece of material out uh, yesterday that I saw that said we really should start uh, having 45. these tests as early as 40 or 45. Yeah, uh, I read that, too. And you know why they say that? The doctors yeah. want to make more money. <laughs> you snick, no. you cynic. The millennials don't eat the right food either. I think that's part. Yeah, of but that. I don't know if that's what brings on polyps. I eat tons of fiber. I eat so many vegetables. Last time, last time I had one polyp, and I hadn't had a test in five years. I think it was, you know, because the one before that was clean. So you know, but they weren't worried about it. And at my age, they say you shouldn't. You probably don't need to have a colonoscopy after you're 77, I think they say. So. Yeah, because a colonoscopy in and of itself can be a little dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah mild. There's always a risk of something happening. There's a mild risk there, but it's it's certainly not a big, giant. Was uh, who was the comedian risk. that died? I'm trying to think. Huh? I think, um, That's new. I think the Who's biggest risk is. They can puncture. They can accidentally puncture oh, your yeah. uh, intestine. Yeah, they your can colon, do that. and then you bleed to death. Now I hadn't heard of any comedian dying from. I think he was talking effect. about the endoscopy that uh, yeah. what's her name? Yeah, yeah. Was Diller. Yeah, what? Well, no, uh, no, Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. My, Joan my Rivers. wife had to have it. My wife had to have an endoscopy, and I had to go pick her up. And the place I picked her up was where Joan Rivers died. So I didn't. I said if I'd known that ahead of time, I don't know if I would have. I would have felt too good about her going to that place to get her endoscopy. Maybe light doesn't them. strike twice. And why is it the endoscopy doesn't go in your end, and the you know and the colonoscopy? Doesn't, I forget it. Anyway, okay. hey, listen. Oh, there goes uh, there goes Jack because he's got to go do a show. They're next with the intersection with Jack and Amy, uh, followed at uh, one uh, one o'clock this morning by Connections. Uh, hey, listen, everybody. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, you know, it was a slow show tonight, but we got through it. And uh, I'm glad to see you're in good health, too, uh, Ray. And hopefully yeah, we'll see you, you tomorrow night along with Jeff and along with uh, Phil, unless he has something he's got to do with his life. But well, like the rest of no, us, he probably doesn't have anything to do with it. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Why don't you give a big wave goodbye to our audience so they can say goodbye to you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, let me get rid of them now so they can go over and talk to Jack. Let me also turn off the phone so Jack can talk to them. And, uh, yeah, all right, there they goes to Skype. And uh, that's it for tonight. Oh, boy, this was... 
slow night tonight, folks. Got real. I get I get depressed really easy about that. So you always got to call me. Anyway, remember, Bub says park it, whore. And I'm Alex Ben. I'll see you again right after Damian Chaplin with the exchange at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time and 10 o'clock, same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.